here series the other day, showing a lot of promise. But you're going to need a little bit more than just promise to go up against a side like Team Secret. I mean, of course, getting Prepare that ward straight down here in the bottom lane. And yeah, it is going to be Arteezy heading towards the mid lane on his TA. We're going to be seeing S4 on the safe lane, Lena. And yeah, of course, there's Zykuroki duo on that test tech. He's up on the top lane with Puppy just hanging around on the bottom, keeping S4 in safe, uh, safeness. And, and yeah, complexity, their lineup, pretty much what we're expecting. We're going to see uh, Z Freak actually with the poor man shield. So maybe it is going to be ZZ in the jungle. Is this I mean, a jungle blood and a, and a laning Naga with the with the poor man's? It could be. I mean, it's it's a little bit different, but I mean, hey, we just saw Navi pretty much do something similar, right? Like they started off by giving the Naga Siren Stout Shield. They they transition her into a position one, and I think that Naga could potentially be good enough at delaying the game to maybe give Complexity a chance here. But again, it's it's all down to the early laning phase. Like, what do you actually get out of the lanes? Like, if you're playing right now in your complexity, are you going to be able to win that Tusk te Techies matchup with, like, Naga Siren safe lane and Winter Wyvern? It seems okay. Like, Naga has very good base armor. No doubt about that. I think armor is, like, the key here as well for these types of heroes. I need to be careful here. There's going to be complexity going in, actually, with the Arctic Burn onto Puppy. Oh, he's got the heal, there's going to be fine. Zai has got the snowball, and here we go. They're looking for Zwinnamela straight in, and there we go with the suicide, getting them the first blood here for Zai on the Tusk. And that, of course, always the danger of trying to fight up level one against the Tusk techies. Yeah, I like how the fact, like, Secret went for the lowest armor hero, pretty much, that was there. Between all of them, Zeus has the lowest armor by a long shot. Or actually, no, Winter Wyvern also has one, so I guess either target would have been fine, but obviously you kill the, the mid player over killing a support, right? So they get themselves on the board in a very quick way. And we can already see Arteezy because Swindle. Uh, I think he got the rune, but he died. Yeah, so now Arteezy, he gets a rune and he gets that level 2 a little bit faster. He'll be able to pressure this middle lane. And so bottom lane is going to actually be this tri lane here. So Z Free is just going to help ZZ out with the farming. Now going for Puppy. Puppy, of course, just level 1. Only got the heal. Needs to be blood raised up as well. So the damage that he's taking is too much. That's going to be 1. And now Complexity looking for S4 as well. We'll get the Light Strike Array onto 2. But Z Freak diving for this. And with the Rip Dive, there we go. That's going to be a third kill for the side of. Well, second kill, essentially. The first one just counting as the suicide from Techies. But nonetheless. Two kills on the board here from this aggressive try lane working out very nicely in top lane. Moon, Zai's got to be careful here. The Iron Shield doing damage, but uh, no, Moon's out of there. The punch is too much from Zai. Kuroki and Zai just backing themselves up. Bottom lane, Puppy just coming in with a harass, forcing ZZ back. But this lane from Complexity proving to, to get the work done. Yeah, the aggro try lane was something that a little bit unexpected, I think, even from the side of Secret. Like, you could tell they were caught a little bit off guard by that. I'm not sure if they're going to be giving away too many more kills like that. Complexity should just be happy with the fact that they got those kills in the first place. And until Zai and Kuro in this top lane hit level 2, we're probably not going to be seeing a whole lot of action. And bottom is just taking a little bit of damage under the tower. I think if they keep... Okay, never mind. Z-Freak's starting to go top. I was going to say, if they keep the tri-line going, they're definitely going to keep down S4. But I don't know if they can do that and just completely sacrifice Moon at this point. Oh. No, oh, he's oh, it out. Secret vision. Oh man, Arteezy pops for a fraction. Moon's going to chase this one down. Surge level one, not going to be enough to chase it. And the ice shards are very nicely there, just in case Darkseer was going to chase it down. But still, Arteezy being forced back, and he hasn't actually got any regen other than the stick on him at the moment. So, looks like he is going to have to go back to base here, giving a lot of space to Swindle here now in the mid lane. Yeah, I mean, having to go back to base at this stage, not really the greatest thing in the world. It's kind of annoying, actually, but... I don't think Arteezy is going to suffer too much for it. You can always recover by stacking for this hero. And you can always recover as well. Like, you, you can stack Ancients, you can stack Creeps. And I think during the mid game, Darkseer and Winter Wyvern are going to be the two biggest issues that he's going to have. Getting ruptured in of itself isn't so bad, but when you have those heroes that can actually, like, move you around, like, with Vacuum and Ion Shells to break the refraction, it could be a little bit of a struggle here for Arteezy. On bottom lane, he's going in with the Arctic Burn Harass onto both of them. The power fly oh, with the blood rage as well. That's a hefty bit of harassment coming out here from the Wyvern. Forcing them back no top lane. Tusk Techies, they're looking for blood so far. Not really being able to find much more than that first blood attempt. And they force Sea Freak back. Still in lane though, Moon. Finding the farm as Darkseer does, keeping itself top of the CS board as well at the moment. So the Tusk Techies are unable to really do anything against the Darkseer in lane. 
Yeah, again, it's it's a lot to do with how much armor the hero has, because Techies is all physical damage up until you get those remotes going. So the fact that Moon has seven armor, he's keeping himself constantly at full HP. This is how you have to play against oh, it. Oh, bottom lane S4 has been blood raised up here. Fly on the side with the Arctic Burn, and now Zizi bringing him low. The Shallow Grave will come out from Puppy. S4 is going to be fine. But again, this combination just absolutely terrifying here in complexity, having a grand old time in this bottom lane. Uh, Puppy's out of mana too, so he's going to have to walk back to base. If they notice that, like if they see him going back to base, they probably just continue to pressure here. I'm not sure if the ward actually scouted him, but before that point, yeah. Arteez has gone incredibly deep here. There's going to be Z3 wrapping around. Ace You're going to have final. Fly coming in as well from the side Radiant if he wants to. And I think you're aware there's a reaction coming out from Secret Zai. Smoked up with Kuroki as well. He's got the suicide available. And they might just use it if Seafreak comes a little bit too close and I think no, it's gonna be Swindle that's gonna be the target. Straight onto the Zeus here. They do have the cold embrace, they're buying some time. That physical damage from the mines. They do too much and uh, the suicide just coming out. I think he realized that uh, there was no way that he was getting out of there. But that's gonna be the suicide used just to escape and not being able to use it aggressively. And complexity. I think they can be very happy with the starting four minutes of this game. Maybe it was a mistake from Secret to not ban Winter Wyvern. If you think about it, all the abilities that techies can do in the early game is all physical. So if for whatever reason Fly is in the area, a Cold Embrace will stop that combo every single time. Like the stun from the Snowball isn't that long. And even if you're, if you're stuck in Cold Embrace, even if you can't move for four seconds, that gives ample time for the rest of Complexity to react and just be like, oh, well, you want to go combo this guy under a tower. We can actually have like two heroes TP in by the time the cold embrace is over. And then the techies might not be able to suicide optimally, which is what we just saw right there. Like Curl pretty much just had to suicide. He didn't have a choice. So I really like the way the complexity are playing this early game. Right, it's certainly working out for them. Arteezy though, still at the top of the CS board. His farm looking pretty damn good. 31 for 8. It's getting to the point now where Swindle's having a little bit of trouble in lane keeping up. 21 for 0 on this Zeus. So slightly falling behind. Top lane Puppy. You're looking to find some levels here up against the darks here. Whereas the rest of the team, Zion and Kuroki, are looking to make a rotation towards this bottom lane. Wanting to do something about this Bloodseeker. He's had quite a bit of space. 20 CS on him at the moment. Still just a bit lower than S4. And here we go. This is going to be able to connect here with the Snowballs. Sigil here, enabling to chase it down. S4 has got the mana for the combo, but Zizi just a little bit too speedy. Will be able to get himself out. And the TP coming in it was cancelled, but it did spook back the side of Secrets. When Amelans and Fly just contesting for the Rune in top lane. Moon going in with a few punches and the Iron Shell to force Puppy back. But so far, it just seems like Secret struggling to kind of get a hold onto Complexity. Well, thankfully, Artur and both uh, S4 are starting to recover in terms of their respective farm rates. At the start, they were both being pressured very heavily, but now Arteezy's made his way back towards the highest CS, and S4 is looking to be in uh, third place right now. And that's pretty much what you want. You just need the cores of Secret to continue that farm. And oh, it's easy. I think he's been caught out a little bit too much this time. And yeah, they'll be able to find themselves the kill here. Techie's there with the mines. He's blowing up the Bloodseeker. It was bound to happen eventually, right? Like, after so many snowball combinations, you have to assume at least one of them is going to be successful. Straight into mid here with the Invis rune. He's going to go in. He hasn't got the snowball here for a few seconds, but it looks like he might not need it. Arteezy here with the physical damage will bring down Zeus. Now TP coming in, flies well with the Arctic Burn. They might be able to try and turn this one around. No, the snowball coming out just in time to dodge the net. And now turning it around, potentially, as Arteezy moves in. Flies got the cold embrace. He's going to be able to live through this, but he's going to be able to live through that one final hit there. No, Arteezy gets himself a double kill here in the mid lane. That was actually really nice usage of Psyblades there from Arteezy. So for anyone who doesn't know, Psyblade is actually pure damage. So if you use Psyblades to hit the person inside of Cold Embrace, it will still hit them. So he used Psyblades to hit a creep once and still deal damage to fly within there just to making sure that he could secure that kill. Oh, very nice for Arteezy and did top of the CS and imagine if we have a quick look at the net worth, yeah. Thanks for those Dying double kills, top fortified. of the board as well. Four for four at the moment, secret, you know, to equalize it for the time being. Uh, S4 still finding a fair bit of farm. And mid lane. Swindle Mellor still continues to fall behind. Certainly having a hard time against Arteezy now on his TA. It's expected though. Again, it's kind of hard to trade the mana for just burning down Refraction, especially once the Refraction gets to be a higher level on Arteezy. He's fully controlling the rune here. Gonna be able to get top, no big deal. Knows no one is in the vicinity from Complexity to stop him from getting this. And even though Complexity had a couple of nice, really early movements, their heroes are still farming okay. You can tell that Secret of Regain lane looking for the Bloodseeker. He's just a little bit too fast that will get himself out. Now he's been surged up as well from Moon. He's going to be fine. He has got a Rupture available. 
I don't know if they can turn it with just the two of them. It's going to be a hard fight to take. And now he's going to leave it. And by the looks of it, just head back to the jungle with the Blood Rage and continue to try and make the most of the map. It makes more sense to not try to go for something risky, especially when you know that Curl has that suicide available. But they're not really building it the same way that Complexity did. He is not opting to max suicide. He's actually just putting the, the two points into it and hoping that that's going to be enough to just go for the kill. And he's putting extra points into mines. An interesting note as well at the moment, Fly. He's kind of been given this lane along with Z-Freak to get himself the levels, work his way towards getting that Winter's Curse online, but S4 going forward. Fly's just kind of set this one up, though. Will be able to live through the burst damage here, though, and now is Z-Freak turning up and the charges as well. Fly will be able to get himself out. Turns around the yard to get burned, but no! Dragon Slave will clip him. And S4 does bring down the Winter Wyvern. Not sure why he turned. Maybe he just underestimated Dragon Slave range. It's very long, like... I think it's even longer than her auto attack range by a fair bit, so... A little bit weird, he ends up giving away that kill. But it's not a huge deal, like support dying at this stage in the game. It's kind of negligible. As long as you're not, like, losing farm in the process. And still, Ziz just doing his jungle bloodseeker thing. He's not really feeling too content to show. I don't know if he's actually going Midas here, or if he wants to finish his treads, because he's kind of pooling gold. Leads me to believe that he wants to, in fact, go that Midas. Yeah, I mean, I guess with the Naga lineup as well, they're kind of happy being in there for the long haul if it, kind of the game goes to plan for complexity. So Midas will be nice, Moon. He's found himself Kuroki here. And uh, actually snagged himself a haste rune as well with the rupture. You know, think about going for it. <laughs> Wall dropped as well. Kuroki does have a suicide available here. And oh, with the Thunder God's Wrath, very nice. They catch out Kuroki. doesn't have a chance to get off that suicide. And Zizi's going to try and chase down Zai now, and he might be able to do it with his movement speed. Nah, he's not going to dive any deeper. A little bit too scared, but nonetheless, getting away with that techie skill. That's really nice because he didn't even suicide. He wasn't even expecting the Zeus ulti, yeah. I think. Although, is it actually worth using suicide in that situation? You respawn 50% faster, but the cooldown itself is still 140 seconds, so maybe it was actually better that he didn't end up suiciding in that particular situation. But we can see here RTZ doing some ancient stacking. Very, very good income. He's going to be able to get to that Desolator probably... I guess 13, 14 minutes, somewhere around there. Maybe yeah. even sooner. I mean, Arteezy's farm's pretty crazy at the moment. 5.5k net worth, a good 1.6 ahead of that Zeus. Complexity are actually smoking up here. And they do have this ward up here, so they know exactly what Artur's up to. Can they get the initiation on Arteezy? Here we go with the slow from the white man, and now with the rope charge. He's going to need some kind of backup. He's just going to look for the simple TP out, but no! The ensnare for Zafri's going to hold him in place, bringing him low. Zizi getting low. Oh, he just gets the lifesteal off. And now with the cold embrace, he's going to be okay. Ice, ice, ice. I keep calling Tusk, ice, ice, ice. Zai coming in there. We'll be able to find the kill in return onto Zizi. And now looking for Swindle Melons as well. Kuroki inside chasing it down. How long until the next noble? 10 seconds. Ice Shards, oh, that Ice Shards placement will block it off, but Moon's there with the vacuum. Kuroki getting low, the look for Swindle Melons here, the song! Just in time, Swindle Melons looks for the TP out right under their noses, and what a song there from Z-Freak. He's going to have to be careful himself, because he hasn't got the mana here for a TP. Ah, yes, yeah, okay, he's just picked up the Arcanes, and Z-Freak there, he's got his teams covered. He's one of the players to watch out for when you're, when you're looking at complexity. Like, every single game, he always manages to bring some really cool plays together. So really happy to see that he's able to get the uh, Swindle out of harm's way there. Little brotherly love, I guess you could say. But complexity now. Still looking to try to get uh, something really big going. They haven't been able to pressure any towers, and I guess both teams are kind of in the same boat in that sense. They, they're not really going for map control so much. It's just a lot of really small skirmishes. And I think that Secret are okay with that because Arteezy is still farming up, right? Like, he's not suffering at all even though he just did die like one time but that one death isn't going to set him back too far he just needs to make sure that he clears up that ancient stack eventually which he might do now uh, mech now complete here onto the uh, moon dark scene at the same time tusk mr zai has got those arcanes still continues to try and find the farm here on the top lane but six for six at the moment if we have a look at the difference between the two sides it's it is just the 1k but yeah we've got to watch rt at this moment because his farm is getting it's getting scary 1300 now on top of the first mithril hammer certainly feels like complexity need to do something about this if they want to try and slow him down 1300 also on swindle on top of his arcanes and fly has now got level six so they have got that curse available for the next fight but yeah still the moon meander he's on level 10 at the moment he's having a grand old time on the top lane well he, he actually played it perfectly against that tus techies he didn't give away a kill 
So normally when you have that matchup, oh, Rupture here. Uh, it's going to be the simple TP out. Can they get in there and talk to Cavs? Yes, they can. Swindlemanners will hold him in place in there. Fly with a Winter's Curse. Just coming out in time. Nicely done there. Throwing down the ult. More than worth it there to get that kill onto the TA. And, uh, oh. Uh, frames have been dropped this time. Headsets haven't. So we are going to have a pause. Frames equal dropped. Something like that. Something similar. But, yeah, Arteezy dying for the second time in a row. Not really the greatest. Just playing it too greedy, I feel. Zai and Kuro were in the area, but they were a little bit too far to really do anything about that. And even then, like with the Winter's Curse being dropped, Complexity are not opposed to just throwing every ult at him, you know? <laughs> they just want to kill him. They're like, whatever, we'll rupture you, we'll curse you. We'll pop Zeus ulti, it doesn't matter. As long as you're dead, it's fine. On the plus side, though, for Arteezy, he did buy that Sacred Mithril before yeah. he died. So he yeah. really loses minimal gold here. So that is, that is something for the TA. But, uh, yeah, hopefully we'll be able to get this show back on the road as soon as possible. Apparently the, um, the practice PCs were, like, more stable than the actual tournament PCs. It was kind of funny. People oh, really? were talking well, about that rings, yesterday, yeah. yeah. Because I guess, I don't know which ones they set up first, but the practice PCs were pretty much on point. And I'm not sure, because yesterday they had to switch out a lot of computers, right? There was like a there was a or few issues. Yeah, some yeah. people were, unfortunately, but uh, we must be at the point now where, where the computers are all swapped up to being the best. But uh, yeah, okay, we we're go. ready. Fly's ready at least, and the G is called. We're ready to get the show back on the road. I mean, Kuroki, in terms of levels, he's has hit level six, so we're going to see those remote mines start to come out. And uh, how are we doing in terms of, has anyone got any sentries here for the side? Not at the moment. Uh, Bloodseeker has finished off his Midas. Okay, S4, just pushing down this bottom lane here with the help of Puppy. Tier 1 now seeing about half health. C3 just soaking in the XP, soaking in the gold. He's got level 7 and 600 on top coming up with the Arcane Boots. Just scouting out the rune here. They'll find this mine and they will be able to remove it here. And uh, obviously one of the strengths here of having Swindle Melons on the Zeus against the Kuroki Techies. The one thing that's kind of... It's good and bad because if you're not very vigilant about how you're spamming your bolt, you can end up just running into mines on accident when you're chasing somebody. That's like the most common thing that happens against Techies is if you don't have detection and you have multiple melee heroes, like for instance Darkseer, Naga Siren, Bloodseeker. Complexity Air is still primarily comprised of melee. So even having the Zeus, Zeus is not a good hero for clearing the mines. That's a problem. Like, he can scout them, but he can't kill them. And Fly is pretty much the only person on the team who can deal with that, and I feel like that could be another reason why he's opted to max that Arctic Burn, because he wants the cooldown to ensure that he can kill those mines when it's necessary. Uh, totally understandable as well. Bottom lane, Kuroki pushing the lane in with the mines there. Puppies are backing him up. Still Z-Freak hanging around here. Making the most of this lane. Moon, uh, he's very, very close to hitting that level 11. And Swinomelon's on the Zeus, as well as the Bloodseeker, is going to opt for a Midas himself. And Midas gaming, whenever you're playing against Techies. We saw the same thing when IG were playing against Complexity, right? Every single person on IG bought a Midas in that game. Every single one. And unfortunately, they still lost, but I think Midas is still... Uh, like, logically, Midas still makes sense. If we think the game could potentially go long, Having something that is a good investment in the early game in terms of how we get experience in gold is always going to be good. Like, that's just the mentality of it. But Arteezy, he's got his Deso. If they want to start going for push, I think they could definitely do that. After having seen two Midases, Secret might just say, let's get some tier 1s. Oh, they're going to clear out the wave here. They know that Moon stuck, stranded by this tower here. Uh, going to be hard to catch out, though. I guess if they can land a stun, they might be able to burst him down with a Laguna and a few melts. But it's going to be... Oh, OK, they can get the timing. I think they might be able to... Yeah, oh, indeed, the God. burst is too much. And with the physical damage, Martiz is going to be Winter's Curse. Horning Arteezy in place. Now, can these two kill him, though? I don't think they can. With the backup of S4, that's going to be complexity. They're going to retreat. In fact, in comes Zai here with the Snowball. Kind of brace coming out to protect z Free, But I don't know if it's going to be enough to save him, because not Arteezy. There with the mount here, as soon as Conor Brace wears out, and they're chasing down Fly as well. Fly's in a lot of trouble, he's gonna need some kind of help, but it doesn't look like anyone's coming in to help him. He's gonna go to the tree line, Ice Shards will catch him out of the Sigil, granting them the vision. S4 with a final right click. Will be able to bring him down as well, so Secret there, find themselves three kills, nothing coming out from the side of Complexity. And that's a good portion of the mech also done for Zai. So once he finishes that, they're gonna have a, a good item to offset the damage dealt by the Zeus, and. 
Zeus with Bloodseeker is something that you always have to respect at every single stage in the game, just because of the damage is a deal. Wrapping yeah. around towards mid, indeed with a snowball and a swindle. RTZ is there as well, and he's going to go for swindle with a 1-2 right clicks. There we go, finds the kill. Uh, we are going to see Swindle Manners actually take down Tus uh, sorry, Techies there, Kuroki, with the Thunder God's Wrath. Oh, puppy. Does he get out of this? It's TP in six seconds. Oh, it's easy seen him. Oh! Can't get off the shallow grave. And it's going to be Puppy losing his life. So they are finding kills in return here. But it is, well, well it was essentially three and then four heroes going down, including the Zeus and Secret just losing two off the back of it. But ten to nine. As we see, slight, slight increase of gold difference there, favoring the side of complexity. But overall, just because of the farm that Secret's got at the moment, so the fact that you have got RTZ, a good 2,000 ahead of this Bloodseeker that's running Midas as well. Yeah, but a lot of that's also because the way that Bloodseeker farms is not as fast, like, just in general. If you abuse Psyblades and you're good at it, you can just farm the jungle, like, twice as fast as any other hero, more or less. And it's the same reason why Ancient Stacking is so good now. Ever since they changed Psyblades to hit Ancients again, you can just stack them nonstop at any stage in the game, and you just continue to get that income. So Gem actually purchased very early here by the Naga Siren here, so Z-Freak not wanting to run into any mines if it's not necessary. It's Moon denies that tier one in the safe lane. I really feel as though Complexity, they're not really pressured to try to get control, but you can tell that the way that Secret are playing this, they don't feel anything. Like, they're just like, okay, well, you're not pressuring any lane, we got techies, we got RTZ farming. They're not really pushing Secret at all right now. Oh, oh, it's easy looking for their inches, but he's going to get scouted out. Is easy and fly there. The side is doing a lot, not quite enough. Fly holding Arteezy in place here with the Winter's Curse. Arteezy's got a double damage, but he's going to go down. He can't find anything from this. Arteezy going a little bit too deep, and he's off the map for a full minute. Those two heroes were so low, though. Like, Ziz lived through that with, like, what, 10 Dyer's HP? Started regening when he was running away. Because he actually put the Solar Crest on Arteezy and then got meld on him with Desolator, so he went from having like 20 armor to minus armor. And then he almost got ex like just blown up instantly. Fortunately for Complexity, they don't lose anybody for it, and Artur dying quite a bit this game, actually. And the third Dyer's death here from the TA still at the top. Uh, top lane TP coming in from ZZ. Yeah, has got the rupture here for 18 seconds. Won't be able to do anything about S4. Bottom lane. Tusk Techies, I mean, you feel like the Tusk Techies haven't really been able to achieve that much this game. I mean, Zai have a little bit more so, but Techies in itself, we haven't really felt the full force of Kuroki yet. Obviously, there's, uh, Techies can come into his element in a numerous amount of ways. I mean, if Dyer's ever gets to the defensive top. stage for Secret, it's going to be very nice to have on the side. But aggressive-wise, not much the old Techies Tusk combo, and a lot of it down to the fact, as you were saying, because of Fly's Wyvern there with the counter. Now, well, Secret have got to be careful. Swindle coming in as well. Actually, S4 has turned up the fight. It's complexity that might be caught off the back of this. No, Z-Freak again with the song. Now, do they want to fight this? They're thinking about it. Fly moving in. He has got a Winter's Curse for 22 seconds. The Sigil scouting out Fly. Fly needs to be very, very careful. Has been surged up and now with the Arctic Burn flying himself away. Will be able to get himself back into safety. Secret is continuing to push. RTZ here on the sidelines. Blink, Desso ready and waiting. And he's just going to look for the Ancients. Needs to keep his farm game up. And with this, should be breaking around that 10k net worth at the moment, around 20 minutes in. And when you talked about the effectiveness of the techies itself, I do agree that Kuro has not really been able to get a whole lot of kills, but I think sometimes it's kind of what the techies brings you in terms of threat is we're going to see a ruptured here mid. Oh, with a vacuum Thunagod's Wrath. Very nicely done there to bring down techies. The fight off the back of it. Puppy's been Winter's Cursed up. S4 hitting his buddy. Yes, it's just got to be fine though, because now they've got the Yules on Bloodseeker. They will catch him here. He has got to look at a break. Bling and blow, but the Colin Brace just in time. In comes the Snowball Stun. They're holding Zizi in place with a Walrus Punch. They'll finish him off. They do get Ziz here on the Bloodseeker. Now can Artor look for more? He's got a Blink in a second. We'll go forward here onto Moon Meander. The armor oh, reduction is too much. We'll blow him up now. Fly from the high ground with the Arctic Burn going in on Tartizi, but it's fine. Puppy's there with a backup with a Shallow Grave. Tartizi will be able to live himself through this one. And they will be able to claim themselves the tier one here in the middle lane off the back of that secret. Now that looked like it was going to be a pretty good fight to start, and action still not stopping bottom lane. Indeed, going forward onto Swindle Mellows, who's caught all out on his own. Another kill for Secret. As Complexity need to be very, very careful about giving away engagements like this. They're giving away a lot now. Like, they've lost all their outer tier towers. Right now, Complexity have only taken the tier one off lane of Secret. 
And the more map control that you actually lose, the more space you give to a hero like Techies to be able to start mining aggressively. And that's going to be when complexity starts to run into some serious issues. Because if Kuro does what he's doing now, he's able to split farm, sit up here, you know, get closer to the Aghanim Scepter, if that's going to be his Look at the Roshan speed, the Vato. Yeah, I mean, that's the later TA. This is, this is what you get, right? So Kuro shows top, and he's like, okay, whatever. You come gank me, then you know that we're going to get Roshan for free, so it's no big deal. And they're just the way that Secret abused the map in general. It's just very, very efficient the way that they've been playing this. Uh, smoke up now from S4. Puppy and Zai moving into the uh, dire jungle. Complexity towards the mid lane, though. They're not going to be able to find any of that, but they might be able to take this tier two if they wish to do so. Kuroki has, of course, already pushed the lane in. And 22 minutes in, Zai, yeah, just going to reveal himself here with Puppy. They're going to look for the push here onto the tier two. Crushes can Complexity do anything. They put the Thunder God's Wrath. They're aware of Secret's. Secret's position here, up towards the top lane. But it looks like it doesn't matter. Artur straight in with the Deso hits onto the tower. It's going to absolutely mount. And he's got 3,000 gold in the bank now on top of the Blink and the Desolator. So he is more than ready to get his next major item. Does he just continue to build, right-click, build for the damage? Does he need to go back for BKB this game, or is it not really going to do too much? I think BKB is still really good. The, the main thing is you want BKB to stop things like Ion Shell and the Arctic Burn from just eating through your refraction. So obviously Rupture still goes through BKB, but if you BKB and pop refraction and you don't move, you still get full benefit from those refraction charges if Ziz wants to try to run in and hit you. And obviously Zeus does absolutely nothing against BKB. The only heroes that you really have to worry about are the Ensnare from the Naga Siren, or if Z-Freak wants to ulti to isolate you with that BKB on, and then of course you're going to have the curse from, uh, from Winter Wyvern. But Radiant Those are really the only things that he would have to worry about if he had BKB. Now, I'm not sure if he feels he needs it, because right now, Secret are still doing oh, a damage of pressuring. He's found S4 there with the vacuum. TP are actually coming in, though. Z Freak there with the song as well to cover the retreat here of Complexity. Yeah, Moon gets out. Z Freak, oh! Very tight timing there with the song. Does manage to get himself away as well. Just in the nick of time, 30 to 11. Ice Shard's being thrown out towards Fly. Won't quite catch the Wyvern. And now Secret grouping up on the bottom lane. And Artsy's is still yet to spend his gold. 4.5k. There we go. Okay, what's he been picking up now? What's on his way out? Okay. Uh, he's just going straight crit. All right. So Very he doesn't nice. feel like he needs the BKB. He just wants to hit really hard. And he, uh, uh, 24 minutes in. He is I, still just a little bit short of the Demon Edge gold, but this is going to be a crazy amount of DPS coming from this TA. Yeah, he can potentially one-shot, like, three of the five members of Complexity, I believe. He probably can't watch out the Bloodseeker, and he probably... Uh, this is an issue for Complexity. I mean, they're breaking the high ground here. Fly's going to get bursted before he can do anything. Complexity needs to get right back here, because Arteezy, with the double damage, is going to be able to find this Tier 3 incredibly quickly. Blood right laid down. He's going to walk it off and go back in here. Tier 3, 25 minutes in. It is going to fall on the bottom lane. And Secret looking for more. They're straight onto the melee racks. Complexity need to do something, but what can they do? Arteezy's got the Aegis ready as well. That's the completed Daedalus now out to him. How, how are Complexity going to defend this? It didn't really seem like they were that far behind, right? Like, it, it just seemed oh, like Arteezy. the kills were kind of even. Coming straight in one hit there, bringing Zizi down to about a third of his half. And as you said, ruptured up, just sits there. He's fine, he's good to go. Now turning towards Swindle, Swindle's got to run. And they just hit the racks. Shallow Graves there as well. Moon, he's going to get bursted down. No, they've got the cold embrace to buy him sometime. Arteezy moving forward. That's your Aegis down now. Now, where's Secret? Can they, they fight off curse. the back of this? They've got to do something. One hit, two hit. That's oh. Zifree getting blown up. That's your Naga Siren evaporating. Winter's curse down on Arteezy, but he did get the refraction off in time. And now with the Shallow Grave, he's just going to continue to the fight crit. for the time being. And he is too much damage for the side of Complexity. Moon is able to turn this one around. No, there comes the Snowball in front side, turning up to the fight. But now, oh, Moon Meander being cold embraced. That will be okay. Puppy trying to duke it out in the tree line. They will be able to kill him as well. But they did lose the melee racks. They did lose the Bloodseeker. I do kill Secret off the back of it, but still losing your melee racks 26 minutes in, not the best of situations to find yourself. That was a really weird engagement though from Secret. They like they snowball in when Puppy has no health, and Zai is pretty much at no HP and no mana. It just seemed a little bit odd that they wanted to try to go all in after the racks had already been killed. But I mean, they didn't even utilize the fact that they a while ago they had retreat mines. Maybe Kuro killed them all. Yeah, I guess they're all gone for the time being. But usually the teams will drop mines, use them as a retreat mechanism. If the fight starts going bad, you just pull complexity right into the mines and it's like, whatever. It doesn't feel like Secret are really like totally in sync in this particular game. 
Radiant's top tower is oh, and uh, well, interesting that S4 is going to be opt for the Bloodstone as uh, one of his first major items after yours this game on Lena. Yeah, as core position Lena, if you're playing like safe lane, it's very common to buy Bloodstone just to make sure that you can spam non-stop. Same reason why you see Lashrak buy Bloodstone, just so you can continue that uh, kind of snowball and just keep your farm relevant throughout every stage of the game. So pretty common stuff. I'm pretty sure he's going to be going back for an Aghanims eventually, or maybe he just goes like blink or something. Oh, complexity now, smoking up here. Let's see what they're going to be able to do with this one. Heading towards the bottom, RTZ is there in lane. Yeah, let's go the backup of Kuroki and Zai. Very nearby. Uh, they're going to go straight to the jungle. Z-Freak does have that song to set something up. Level 11 as well, so... The cool isn't going to be as much of an issue. And here we go. Wrapping around, they found him. They found him, and they're going to look to just go straight onto RTZ. They found the Winter's Curse. RTZ dropping very, very low. Can they keep him alive? Oh, no, they can't. He's going to go down Zai as well. Complexity with a fantastic gank here onto Secret Kuroki. Stuck in the corner. Will commit suicide. And that's going to be three heroes dropping on Secret and a very nice smoke gank there from Complex. They didn't even need to use the song. I'm actually, like, super surprised that Complexity are doing as well as they are. I mean... There's been a lot of people who have underestimated them. You know, it's a primarily American team, and we're, we're really only known for having EG, right? Like, that, that's kind of like our one team. And Archon uh, got eliminated in the wild card, so... I'm actually really happy to see the complexity they're able to sit in this game, and with a team that could be considered one of the top three in the world, they're still able to contest them like this. This is incredibly impressive stuff. Very impressive indeed. Gold-wise, this time to pull it back round as well. Did go up to about a 10k lead for the side of Secret, but now it's heading back towards the side of Complexity. I mean, RTZ, what was he able to pick up on top of the Daedalus? Hasn't yet finished anything on top. 1,200 gold on him. He might buy BKB now. Like, yeah. after what happened to him in the last two fights, I feel like BKB is such a safe safety net for him. Like, he doesn't have to worry about Iron Shell. He doesn't have to worry about Zeus damage. He doesn't have to worry about Blood Right. It's just only Curse and then getting ruptured. Those are the two things that he has to care about the most. Like, even getting netted is not that big of a deal. It's like, whatever, I can still hit things if I'm trying to push high ground or whatever. It's it's not really that bad. But going for the Daedalus, he just wants the, the big numbers. And, I mean, it showed that it's very useful because he actually killed the Bloodseeker when they were inside of Complexity's base just because he had a Daedalus. Like, if he didn't crit there, the Bloodseeker would have lived. But I think it's already been showcased more than one time that Complexity's team fight is nothing to shake a stick at. Well, it certainly feels, though, that uh, there's a lot of space being given to S4. Right. Has got the boost to travel now, 1k gold on top of it as well, only just behind the Zeus. And Zeus, of course, has been running the Midas for the majority of the game, and he's <laughs> talking about the Zeus's net worth. Has now got an E-Blade on top of his 15 Bloodstone charges. Really useful against the TA. Even when BKB comes out, and this item could be in anticipation of just that, like thinking Arteezy, his next item pretty much has to be Magic Community. You can just E-Blade whoever the TA goes on, because a lot of the damage at Secret Deal right now is physical. Like, sure, they have Alina, but between having, like, uh, Mines and Techie Suicide and stuff like that. And most of the TA. Like, the, the TA is the one here that you actually want Ghost Scepter for. Top lane, Secret smoked up. Arteezy was the only one to reveal himself in lane there. They're going to wrap around towards mid. Can they find Swindle? It'll be a very nice pick off. The highest net worth at the moment on the side of Complexity. And now he's sticking with the rest of the boys, and they're going to smoke up themselves. Z3 just getting the images out. Just playing very, very carefully. Roshan's uh, going to be up in a couple of minutes, potentially. So Secret might look to wait until they can grab that one. Oh, it's easy now with the bottle double damage as well. This would be a, a, a little well. If Complexity can catch out Arteezy, then, I mean, we've seen the fights go pretty much their way every time. It's all about controlling the TA. Yeah, prior to having that BKB, one well-placed curse from Fly just ends the fight, pretty much. All they have to do is take him down, and then the rest of Secret don't really have, like, a ton of damage. You're going to be relying on S4 to kind of deal some, but again, he doesn't have eggs. He just went for the Bloodstone build and the Yules. So he's got a good setup, but Arteezy definitely over the course of the fight will deal more damage, especially with that DD like he has picked up a little bit earlier. So checking the Roshan timer, it's about a minute left. So I think that both teams are going to try to vie for control of that Roshan pit soon. I think with one racks down, if you give away a Roshan at this point, it, it might be a little bit too much for you to handle. And maybe Secret are able to push in another set of racks because of that. S4, just keep it into top to join Arteezy. They did, of course, scout this movement from Complexity out. Has now been dewarded. 
They want to look for Swindle. Can they find this? If they can stagger it, they should be able to before we can get out the ghost form. No, he gets it out in time. Oh! Oh! oh the the easy blade. with the side block. Wow. That crit, though. How hard did that hit him? Like 1,400 or something? That was insane. That, that was crazy. And the funny thing, too, is it I think that was like just at the edge. Because that was really far. Okay, it was 1,100 so, crit. Damn. Yeah, 1,100 damage straight up. Right now, Melon's just saying they're going, did that really just happen? Because he E-bladed, but he got hit with side blade, and side blade it is pure, pure damage. damage. Yeah. yeah, so it goes for it. It doesn't boost it, but it, it, it doesn't, doesn't need boost. to be boosted. Yeah, it, <laughs> well, when you crit for 1,100, <laughs> you don't need to be boosted much, right? Woo! That's a dead Zeus. That was uh, that's <laughs> impressive stuff there from TA. And uh, a little bit more gold in his pocket now, 17,500. Yeah, that's the BKB done. So Artsy's now got his BKB ready for the next fight. And it's uh, going to be a lot harder for Complexity to deal with. Still there's a farm on Complexity elsewhere. How are we looking? Uh, Vlad's has been the option for Naga. With stockpiling, they got a little bit, but we're not going to see any kind of Radiance Naga this game. It is going to be that more kind of orthodox support build from Naga Siren. I think the Radiance might have actually been better. I mean, I, it kind of depends, because you don't know if you're going to get to that point. Like, you don't know if you're going to be able to get that farm before a secret either takes Roshan or just straight up ends the game. And knowing that the TA is going to have BKB for the next couple of engagements, and it's going to be a 10-second BKB with Blink, Deso, and Daedalus, Arteezy just went from being, like, a pretty big threat to a gigantic threat. Like, having that freedom in the team fight to say, okay, I can bait, like, two ultimates just on me, Rupture and the Winter's Curse, and still be able to fight because they don't have to worry about my refraction getting eaten. That's going to be something that Complexity are going to need to find a way around. Oh, it's easy. Moving forward here on the mid lane. I've got Mumiander here on the side, along with Fly. And top lane just being pushed in by S4. Again, himself. I mean, on top of the bots now, 3.2k gold. Uh, it's uh, starting to look very, very fat here on the side of Secret. Complexity revealing themselves here in the mid lane, and Artor going straight in onto Fly. Cold Embrace coming out. Arteezy's also got the support of the Lotus Soul granted to him by Tusk. The song is coming out, though. And the question is, what do Complexity do with this? They're moving on to S4. They want to try and go for a kill here. Arteezy is still there on the side. He's been ruptured up, though, trying to walk around here with the BKB. Winter's Curse holding in place, so Artor could not help his team out. There's going to be a snowball coming out onto Z3, but they've already lost Kuroki. They've lost two, and they're going to lose, they're going to lose S4. They've lost four. Arteezy, he was kept in control by Fly. He will end up killing Fly. They did also find the Bloodseeker, but Secret have lost four, and now they're all rest of Complexity trying to converge in onto Arteezy. I don't quite know if they'll be able to find this kill, though. And they're trying to chase it down. Artor is going to try and turn around and give the slap to Moon, and one more. He's going to kill Moon here. Swindle Melons, though. If he, Swindle Melons finds the kill, and he does, and that's absolutely worth it. Effectively, a team wipe against the side of Secret, and Complexity just keeping their game at the highest of levels. As soon as the initiation happened where they song in, they get two man vacuum wall. That gave Ziz a ridiculous amount of movement speed. The hilarious part about it though was that he walks into Kuro and Kuro just drops a mine, suicides, and he he kills Ziz in the process. So that trades a one for one. Arteezy spent so much time chasing around a winter wyvern. Like you don't need to chase fly. It's fine if he cold embraces himself. Just go hit somebody who's not physically immune. He pretty much walked all the way past the Tier 2, almost to the Tier 3, trying to chase him when the rest of his team was just being massacred. It was, I mean, just the control from Complexity. We saw the Rupture come out, the Winters goes everything onto Arteezy. So he was just unable to contribute anything to the fight. And as you said, he went for the Wyvern anyway. So he wasn't able to back up his buddies. And uh, the fight, wow, well, with that, it's going to swing it around a little bit for Complexity here. So complexity. I mean, we were looking at the odds on sites, and it was 8% complexity. This doesn't feel like a 92% to 8% game. Well, the last time when we saw the IG matchup, it was kind of the same, right? It was, I believe, 83%, 70 People are underestimating complexity. Yep. I mean, they haven't won the game yet, but this is a pretty strong performance so far, 36 minutes in, against Team Secret. Yeah, one of the front runners in the world in terms of Dota Team. So I'm, I'm in the same boat as you. I, I'm definitely thinking to myself, Complexity are coming into this the underdog, but they're making it a fight. And I mean, this Zeus is still very farmed. Like, he's got tw or 2,000 gold now on top of the E-Blade that he had earlier. He can look to buy something like Refresher. He can go Dagon. I think his item of choice typically in this situation is Dagon as well. I think he likes to go for the big burst on one hero as opposed to just having, like, the 
the double ulti. But the options are open. Like, if he goes for Dagon, he's got that burst for one target. If he goes Refresher, he can get the whole team low for the Bloodseeker. And then Ziz can just run at, like, 900 movement speed. Just be a huge issue for Secret to have to deal with. Looks like both teams starting to prioritize Roshan here. They realize it's up. And BKB is still up on RTZ2. It's nine seconds. Hopefully he can get a better use of it during this fight. Because the E3K just with the illusions, D mining what Techies is down. And ooh, Zai trying to go in onto a fly, but fly up to the high ground here with the Arctic Burn. It's going to be safe for the time being. S4 will find the Yours here. Do they have a amount of damage here from the high ground to disperse? No. Z3 is coming in with a song. Are they going to be able to turn this one? Wall's being dropped here. S4 and Zai are in it already. Here we go. Zai gets off the snowball straight away, looking for Swindle Melons, but he's moving in on his own. RTZ trying to find the kill onto Zizi. Will blink forward. Can he actually find it here? No. The Solar Crest evasion is doing too much. He can't get the kill onto the Bloodseeker. And now Complexity, they're turning around. They have lost Moon here. Zai's incredibly low. And so is S4. With the Winter's Curse, they'll be able to bring down S4. RTZ turning back up for the fight. He's got a lot of work to do, and maybe he can do it. The Cold Embrace on just Swindle Melons here will keep him alive. It's going to be Zai looking for fly, fly, flying down to the high ground, the low ground, sorry. Arteezy trying to get the hits on Swindle Melons, but Swindle Melons, he's able to get himself away for the dive. Oh no, Arteezy going forward with the blink. Can they kill him? Yes, they can. With the mailed hit there, they will end up killing the Dark Saber complexity. They're not done. Z Freak looking for Arteezy. He's got to be careful though, because the damage is uh, it's pretty hefty. Looking for the Bloodseeker, they'll find him, they'll trap him up in the Ice Shards here. If can bring down ZZ, this is going to be very nice, but no, again, the Cold Embrace from Fly, giving ZZ that extra chance here to fight. And now holding out ZZ, but no, there we go, the mine there from Kuroki, holding them in place, blows himself up as well. The fight continues, RTZ incredibly low, he's going to look for the TP out, no, he cancels it, he says, guys, I can help you kill Swindle, will they be able to kill Swindle? He's low, oh no, the God. Cold Embrace, Fly again, keeping Swindle Melons alive. There's going to be a buyback now from ZZ, he wants to come back and join the fight, because they're incredibly low on the side of Secret Pup. We'll put the Glimmer Cape S4. Has returned with the Yules now. Locking onto Z3. Bowler burst him down with the Luna Blade. Here's ZZ. Rupture onto S4. He's going to turn towards Zai. Has got RTZ around here to worry about as well because RTZ is still alive. He's been BKB'd and uh, Shadow Great Can they get him? No. Blinks oh away my. just in time. Now S4 going in here with the help of Zai. Snowballing forward. Look at the speed of ZZ. He is out of there. No, he's going back in. He wants to find some kills. He's very low. Got to be careful. If any kind of burst comes from S4, they'll be able to kill him and they will. That is a dieback from your Bloodseeker. <laughs> Mumianta realizing this is the time to disengage. And and complexity. How they is Arteezy not dead? A damn fight. But at the end of the day, it is a dieback from Bloodseeker. And let's have a look at the fight recap. They did effectively lose everyone, but... I don't think nah. I've seen a team get outplayed like that in a while. Like, Arteezy walked around that fight with 5% health for like a minute and a oh half. Oh my goodness. He gets out of the team fight once due to a clutch force staff to the low ground. After already having the grave on, he blinks to the other side of the river, what? reinitiates, nice vacuum. Ah, but it might cost Moon's life. <laughs> Stakes going to be able to get away with the Glimmer Cave. There is the Snowball chasing him down with the surge as well. Moon's out of there. I don't understand how Arteezy oh, lives. Like, I really just, oh, it's all. I don't get it. Like, how, how is he alive? Uh, this is uh, 40 minutes, and now at the top of that, Demon Edge, 2.4k towards what I can imagine to be those double javelins for the MKB. 27, 25, the difference after that fight, though, yeah, those buybacks and dieback, of course, costing the side of complexity quite a bit. And Secret, now for the first time, start to confidently break away in terms of the difference on the graphs. But... What what a fight! Though. I mean, completely. They you got to give them fly doing so much there, keeping their team alive, but just wasn't enough at the end of the day. She says secret just with the outplays. I mean, after a fight like that, you're gonna be thinking to yourself, how do we actually, like, how do we actually win a team fight if that's gonna be what happens? Like, it, the thing about cold embrace is you're buying time, but you're not really pressuring when the cold embrace is on, right? It's not like grave where you can still act. Like, if he gets Shallow Graved when Arteezy was at, like, 1 HP, and he's just sitting there hitting Ziz and forces him out of the team fight or almost kills him straight up, you don't have that same freedom with a Cold Embrace. So instead of being able to set up a kill with it, you're pretty much just biding time. It's a little bit different in the functionality of the skills, so I think that's a lot to do with the fact that Secret were able to take that fight, even though Fly, like, he was doing everything he could. It's not that using the heal is bad, it's just, it, it's different in terms of what you're able to accomplish with it, so that Roshan secure from Secret. Aegis now up on S4. I think he's making his way towards Shiva's. It's a little bit of a different take on Alina build here. I am for the large part. Seems to be working out. Eight kills, six assists, and has only died four times here S4. 
That is your MKB now complete on RTT. He's yeah. level 25 as well, getting very, very close to capping out here on the TA. And he is full damage this, right now. Yeah, this is a very, very scary. And uh, suddenly the Solar Crest, and we've seen them do a little bit to help out complexity, not going to be the case anymore with that true strike with that old MKB. And, uh, well, top lane, S4 just going straight in here. Arctic Burn Slow coming out. And they will force S4 back. Yeah, it's seen a fair bit of damage here with the E-Blade as well, but the reverse E-Blade there from the Lotus of Zor wants a swindle. Oh, has been ruptured up, sits there, takes it like a man in the mid lane. Swindle trying to come in, but the refraction's already out. Our complex, they need a one by combo. They, of course, do have Z-Freak to set it up here with the song if they want to try and fight into secret now. And, of course, that is a big if. They have to go for Arteezy, I think. Like, he doesn't have Aegis here. So oh, if they can kill him... Outside. Oh, he wants to go for Ziz. Oh, Z-Freak controlling him here with a... Still, Complexity looking for the right kind of opening. The Gunner Blade was thrown out there by S4, and his song... Oh, this is three-man wall. Can they get this off? Yeah, they sh well, they're not going to go Wait, for it. In fact, they're going? looking towards top. Because Arteezy was hitting away at the Tier 3. I did have to look for a bit of a defense. That was definite miscommunication. There's no way you don't wall that. Like, if you get that wall going and you get Ziz a really good sack on his thirst. Oh, God, Puppy just gets annihilated. And they might lose S4 here as well. They do. He has got the Aegis. Winter's Curse onto Zai. The fight could do the Arteezy. One more. Four no, staff. the corner breaks. Arteezy getting low. Will they be able to keep him alive? No. This time, Arteezy goes down. And now, this is the point where Secret need to think very carefully about sticking around here. They'll snowball for the punch. They do get the kill onto Swindle. Zai just waltzing through it all, gonna look for the TP out, but the instead there, he is gonna lose his life. They will find a double kill here for Ziz. And it's only Kuroki and S4 living, but S4, yeah, didn't manage to TP out, but they did kill Arteezy, and again, we're seeing that when Complexity do kill Arteezy, they come out on top, and oh, Kuroki just went in there for the suicide. Uh, he wasn't able to find anything, and uh, the mines that he's popped down will all get taken. Away. That's a gem, too. Oh, it so, was it was uh, I yeah, think it was a gem actually that Secret got from Complexity and, and they just reclaimed it. So now they have two gems. I'm pretty sure that's what went down. So the retreat mine's not really able to utilize there. It was kind of a clutch force staff trying to force Swindle in so Arteezy could actually get that kill, but I don't really think the TA like if he gets ruptured, he kinda just has to stand there. Like what else can he really do during that engagement? And I think like the Lena build from S4, it's unconventional, but it's it's not really bursting anybody, you know? Like, who is he actually killing when he doesn't have Aghanims, when he doesn't have, like, a, a Hex, he doesn't have that lockdown? Oh, it's certainly different. And, uh, as you said, at this point, 28 to 29, complexity. Looking very good. They are still behind in terms of the difference in net worth because of Arteezy's farm. But if they're able to kill him a couple of more times, they will be able to close that gap. Arteezy will be back in 10 seconds. They will see what he's going to be able nice, to oh, Okay. Yeah. And that is Bloodseeker dead without buyback. Yeah, 80 uh, seconds. With the mines hidden in the trees, okay. Yeah, so no. Yeah, that's that's not great because TA is back up. And top lane, eyes are on fly and swindle melons. I mean, they might think about trying to go for Zai, but with the Lotus Orb, it's very hard for Zeus to do anything with the E-Blade. It's going to be your snowball going in onto fly. S4 is there as well. Fly is in a lot of trouble. Whoa, won't be able to cut the golden brace. And they'll bring down the Wyvern. That's two heroes down on the side of Complexity. RTZ working his way down the middle lane. Top lane's going to get packed in as well here by the side of Secret. And they might be able to get themselves towards the base before Bloodseeker is back up by the looks of it. I think they'll be able to do some damage. Not sure if they're... Okay, well, RTZ's here. Maybe they can make something big happen. The buyback, though, is now up on Ziz. I think he got enough passive gold gain to actually be able to bring himself back into the game. If Secret could force that now... That would be ideal, because around the time that Rush is spawning, I think that they still would not have buyback. So Fly, he's been forced to buy out. That'll force Secret back for the time being. I think they still want to try to go for this tower, though. And this uh, Lotus Orb, uh, yeah, okay. It's going to be your stuff. Z3 is trying to set this up. This time, will they drop the wall? You'd imagine they, they will do three. this as a three-man. No, wait, it's not dropping. He doesn't want to do it. Winter's Curse is going to get dropped, though, onto Puppy. S4 pops the BKB, looking towards Swindle. Swindle will get low. Arteezy moving in. They'll be able to take down Fly. That's one down. That's going to be Moon falling as well. Double kill here for Arteezy. Buyback from Moon as he needs to return to the fight because the Rax are now under trouble. Z Freak, he's going to blink himself, well, move himself away. Ah, Arteezy take a lot of damage. But the damage from himself is too much. Moon, that's a dieback. It's a triple kill for Arteezy. Z's on the way out. Needs to escape from this one. Arteezy incredibly low. They're keeping him up. Z really wants to fight. 
this kill, but he walks over the mines. Zizi needs to get himself back. So the Ice Shark won't quite trap him. Bloodseeker back to base. This is three heroes down on the side of Complexity, none with buyback available. Swindle left to hold the base on his own here. And he's going to blink forward here as well. Kuroki has got a suicide. Can they turn this one? Can they get themselves back in? Suicide has been used now. Let's seek her there. They're going to blood rage up the Zeus. They look a little bit scared. They need to run. They can't stay here. This is like so risky what they're doing right now. Puppy has almost no mana. Okay. Thank God they're getting back. Jesus. Like, staying like this is very risky. I mean, sure, you force a couple of buybacks, you even got a hero to die back, but they didn't actually get a Rax. You made them invest a lot of money into defending their base, but you didn't actually get anything tangible from your push, so... I'm looking at this game right now and I'm thinking... RTZ is just kind of being kited in these team fights. you know? Like, he gets ruptured, and then he kind of has to chill. And then he just sits there, and it's either he gets auto-attacked down, or the Winter's Curse comes out. And by the way, what was that initiation? Like, they song, they have a free three-man wall into a curse, and they don't take it? What... I seem to be holding back on the walls. What possible reasoning could you have for not wanting a three-man vacuum wall into curse? Because when they used the curse on Puppy, he got immediately glimmer caped and took almost no damage. So I, I don't know, that was really confusing. I think Complexity could have held that with a lot less risk if they had just opened up the way they did before. Oh, TZ's gonna be back up in just a few seconds and we'll see if they're able to go for it again. They did manage to take the tier 3, so it is the exposed Rex on top. And still obviously off the back of that fight. The lead still very much in Secret's favor, 20,000. It's going to be a smoke up now from the side of Complexity. Roshan's going to be up in a few minutes. Oh, it's going to get revealed by Kuro. And there we go. Okay, they spotted Kuroki out and straight in. Winter's Curse as well. They won't take he's dead. Won't be able to get off the suicide. The bounce back there on the E-Blade to Swindle. He's been blood raged up as well though, so he's ready to fight. S4 on the front. And there's your wall back nice. in. That's nice. Very nice indeed. Won't be able to get anything more. It's still just the techies down for this one. S4 moving forward with the Shiva guard here. C3 getting low. Needs to be careful. RTZ trapped up here by the net. Now there's your song. Are they going to move up on Thargo and look for more? They do have a Windows Curse available, of course. Was used on Kuroki. Maybe they've got the well, opportunity. RTZ just going straight in. That's going to be one. That is your Wyvern down. Zai trying to deal with them on the side. Oh, oh the crit! RTZ gets himself a second kill. Double kill here. And at the same time, we've got Zai trapping up ZZ. Oh, that is a Bloodseeker. The Bloodseeker dies. He did not have buyback. Zai trying to chase this down. He can't mine? quite get it. The oh! mine! That mine! 80 seconds down for the Bloodseeker. This could be the opening for Secret to do something major. No buyback available for the Wyvern for three minutes. Darkseer in the same boat as well, and so is Bloodseeker. He's 1,000 short, straight into the base. This could look like his... He's looking for the side blade here through the E-Blade. He doesn't need it at the end of the day because it wears out. We'll kill him. That might just be the gap that loses complexity the game. And yeah, this this is him onto the tier fours. Four heroes down at the moment. I think it's game, Andy. Yeah, I think that's uh, but that's all she wrote for game one. You've got to hand it to complexity. For the entirety of the game, they played very, very well against Secret. And at the end, it was just that one fight a couple of maybe decisions, well, decisions that Secret just made a hell of a lot better at the end of the day. The way that Complexity took their last few fights, yeah. it really seemed like they were so hesitant like to go in. When Z-Freak thro throws out a song and you get a wall into a three-man vac and then you have Fly nearby to throw out a curse, that is 